Unit 1, Lesson 7, From Parallelograms to Triangles Number 1. To decompose a quadrilateral into two identical shapes, Claire drew a dashed line as shown in the diagram. A. She said that the two resulting shapes have the same area. Do you agree? Explain your reasoning. Here's a closer look at the dashed line that Claire drew. The result is two shapes, one on the left, one on the right. The shape on the left is a triangle, which is half of this square. The dimensions of the square would be four by four. That would give the area of the square 16 square units. The shaded region is a triangle, which is exactly half the area as the square. The area of the triangle would be eight square units. And we can look at the rectangle on the right and see that its dimensions are two by four, and two times four is eight. So the area of the rectangle is also eight square units. I'm going to decompose the triangle and then rearrange it so that you can see that it has the same area as the rectangle on the right. Look carefully and you'll notice that this triangle consists of four half unit squares and six one unit squares. I'm going to rearrange the half units to make one unit squares. Now that I combined the half unit squares, we have all one unit squares. Now I can rearrange these unit squares and stack them on top of each other to make a rectangle that has the dimensions 2 by 4, just like the rectangle on the right. She was correct. They each have an area of 8 square units. Number 2. Triangle R is a right triangle. Can we use two copies of triangle R to compose a parallelogram that is not a square? If so, explain how or sketch a solution. If not, explain why not. The answer is yes. Here's two examples of how I use two copies of triangle R to compose a parallelogram that is not a square. Number three, two copies of this triangle are used to compose a parallelogram. Which parallelogram cannot be a result of the composition? If you get stuck, consider using tracing paper. I used a line to separate the copies of the two triangles in figures A, B, and D. Figure C didn't work. It's composed of two triangles that are a different shape than the triangle on the left. Number 4a. On the grid, draw at least three different quadrilaterals that can each be decomposed into two identical triangles with a single cut. Show the cut line. One or more of the quadrilaterals should have non-right angles. I've come up with four examples. The first three don't have right angles and the square does have right angles. I can decompose these into identical triangles with a single cut line. B. Identify the type of each quadrilateral. The first three quadrilaterals are parallelograms and the fourth one is a square. Number 5. A. A parallelogram has a base of 9 units and a corresponding height of 2 thirds units. What is its area? To figure out the area, we're just going to multiply the base times the height, or 9 times 2 thirds. So we can just multiply 9 times 2 thirds, but I have a different way to show you that I think you might find interesting. Using a piece of graph paper, I've drawn out 9 square units, and each of the 9 square units are divided into thirds. Since the height of the parallelogram in the problem is only two-thirds tall, I colored in two-thirds of each of these units. Rather than just having nine units that are only two-thirds the way filled, I'm going to start decomposing and rearranging to fill up as many units as I can. I've decomposed it and rearranged it so that now I have six full units. 
9 times 2 thirds equals 6. The area of a parallelogram that has a base of 9 units and a height of 2 thirds units is 6 square units. B. A parallelogram has a base of 9 units and an area of 12 units. What is the corresponding height for that base? We know that base times height equals area, but they haven't given us the height. So we have base times unknown equals the area, or 9 times the unknown number equals 12. To figure out what number we multiply times 9 to get 12 is the same thing as how many times does 9 fit into 12? Or how many times does 9 go into 12? And to figure that out, we need to divide 12 by 9. And 12 divided by 9 is 4 thirds, which is the same as 1 and 1 third. So the height of this parallelogram is 4 thirds or 1 and 1 third units. C. A parallelogram has an area of 7 square units. If the height that corresponds to a base is 1 fourth unit, what is the base? This illustration represents a parallelogram that has an area of 7 units and a base of 1 fourth unit. The height is unknown. Again, we know that base times height equals the area. They provided us with the base and the area. 1 fourth times height equals 7 square units. We need to figure out what number times 1 fourth equals 7. Or how many times does 1 fourth go into 7? 7 divided by 1 fourth equals 28. So 1 fourth times 28 equals 7. We know that the height is 28 units. Number 6. Select all segments that could represent a corresponding height if side n is the base. In order to find the height, we need to find side lengths that are at a 90 degree angle compared to side n. I've drawn side n in red, and both segments g and h are at 90 degree angles to side n and represent the height when side n is base.